So in this video, I'm going to prove that the sine of t is greater than or equal to 2t over pi, where t varies between the closed interval 0 to pi over 2. Now you might be wondering why on earth I'd want to prove such a thing, it doesn't seem like this inequality might be useful at all, but it's very useful because I'm going to be able to use this inequality um, to calculate the values of some of these integrals below. So for instance, the integral from 0 to infinity of sine of x squared, also the integral from 0 to infinity of cosine of x squared, the so-called Fresnel integrals, and I'll be able to use this result to calculate the value of the integral of sine x over x, taken over the interval from 0 to infinity. And I can also use this for some more, use this for some other integrals as well. So let's get into it. Let's see what I want to do. Well, the first step that I'm going to do in my proof, so let's start with proof. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new function g of t, and that's going to be equal to sine of t divided by t. Now I want to show that this function is decreasing on the interval from 0 to pi over 2. So if t uh, is an element of the open interval from 0 to pi over 2, and I'm using the open interval for technical reasons, but I'll be able to tie that up later, I want to show that this is a decreasing function in this interval, and that's equivalent to showing that g prime of t is less than or equal to 0 for values of t belonging to the open interval from 0 to pi over 2. So what can I do then? Well, I know that g of t is sine of t over t. So I can calculate g prime of t from the definition of g. And what's that? Well, g prime of t, that's just going to be the derivative of my function with respect to t. So that's the derivative of sine of t over t. And this is a quotient of two differentiable functions, which are differentiable on the open interval from 0 to pi over 2. So I can use the quotient rule to do that. And the derivative of this whole thing with respect to t is the bottom times the derivative of the top, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. So when we do that, we get the bottom, which is t, times the derivative of the top, which is cos t, because the derivative of sine is just cosine. So t times cosine of t minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. So that's minus sine t, that's the top, times the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the bottom is just 1 because the derivative of t is 1. So I just I don't need to write the 1 here. And that's going to be divided by the bottom squared, which is just t squared because the bottom is t. Now, I want to show that g prime of t is less than or equal to 0. So in other words, I need to show that this whole expression here is less than or equal to 0. And if I can show that, then I can show that g is a decreasing function on this interval. Now I want you to notice a couple of things about this expression on the right hand side, t cos t minus sine t over t squared. First of all, t squared is always a positive number. It's never going to be negative, no matter what value of t I put in. Remember, t is a real number between 0 and pi over 2. So this term, so this term, t squared, that is always a positive number in this interval. So therefore, the only thing that can give me a negative contribution is the numerator, t cos t minus sine t. That's the only way I can get a negative number. So the only way I can get a neg negative number is if t cos t minus sine t is less than or equal to zero. So in other words, that's equivalent, so I'm using this double implication sign, forwards implication and backwards implication to show that this whole thing is, is equivalent to showing that t cos t minus the sine of t is less than or equal to zero. Now I can just add sine t to both sides and say that that's equivalent to showing that t cos t is less than or equal to sine t. Okay, now I'm going to divide both sides of this inequality by cosine. Why can I do that? Well, on the interval from 0 to pi over 2, cosine is never 0. So if I draw a graph, a quick graph of cosine, this is what cosine looks like from 0 to pi over 2. It starts at 1, at the origin and it hits 0 when x is equal to pi over 2, or when t is equal to pi over 2. So this is the t-axis, um, and this represents cosine t. Then on the open interval from 0 to pi over 2, it's never going to hit 0. Remember, I'm not including the endpoints as part of my calculations. So I can perfectly reasonably divide by cosine t. Also, the direction of the inequality is not going to change because cosine is always positive. It never goes below the t-axis. So this is equivalent 
to showing that t, well, let me write it over here. So this is equivalent to showing that t is less than or equal to sine t divided by the cosine of t, just dividing both sides by cosine. But sine over cosine is tangent. So that's the same as the tangent of t. So all I need to show, to show that g is a decreasing function, remember g was just sine t over t, all I need to show is that t is less than or equal to tan t um, for t belonging to the open interval from 0 to pi over 2. And that's exactly equivalent to showing that the tangent of t is greater than or equal to t for all values of t belonging to the open interval from 0 to pi over 2. So what can I do now? Well, I'm actually going to use a theorem called the mean value theorem. This is a very, very common um, theorem used in real analysis and complex analysis as well. And let me just remind you what that is. So the mean value theorem, what does that say? The mean value theorem. Mean value theorem. So what does that say? Well, let's see what it says. Um, so suppose f is a continuous function. So suppose we've got some function f. Suppose f is a continuous function on the closed interval, let's say from a to b, where a and b are real numbers with a less than b. And I want to also suppose that um, f is differentiable on the open interval from a to b. So suppose f is differentiable on the open interval from a to b. So that means that at every point inside this open interval, not including the points at a and b, um, I can find the derivative of f. Then the following thing is true. Then I can find some number so there exists, this backwards e means there exists, or I can find at least one value of. So there exists some value c inside the open interval from a to b, such that f prime evaluated at c is equal to f of b minus f of a, so f evaluated at each of the endpoints of the interval, all divided by b minus a, so that's the size of the interval. Okay, so how am I going to use this on tan? Well, I'm going to use this um, on the function f of t equals tan t. So I'm going to set f of t, so f of t, I'm going to set that equal to tan t. And I'm going to apply the mean value theorem on the closed interval from 0 to u, where u is some positive real number that's less than pi over 2. Okay, so what happens when I do that? Well, first of all, am I allowed to apply the mean value theorem? Well, first, before I, I justify why I can do that, let's just draw a graph of tan t. So if this is the t-axis and the vertical axis represents the value of the tangent function, then it looks something like this. I'm going to have, it's going to be zero at the origin. It's going to blow up to infinity at t equals pi over two and it's going to go down to minus infinity when t is equal to minus pi over 2. Okay, so let's look at the conditions of the mean value theorem. So I first of all, I need f, so that's tan. I need my tangent function. Let's, let's, let's go back up. I need tangent to be a continuous function on the closed interval from 0 to u. So u is less than pi over 2. So u is any value between 0 and any point just before this vertical asymptote. So u could be here, for instance. And tangent of t is certainly a continuous function on this interval. So if this were u, the tangent is certainly a continuous function on this interval. OK, it's continuous. Is it differentiable? Well, sure it is. The derivative of tan is sec squared t. And that certainly exists at every point, not including pi over 2. Now, or in other words, I can draw a tangent line, a unique tangent line to the tangent of t at any point in this interval. So any point um, in this interval from 0 to u. And I can draw a unique tangent line, which means the derivative exists.
OK, so tangent or f is continuous on the closed interval from AB and f is differentiable on AB. So what does that mean? That means I can find some point C in the open interval from A to B, or in this case from 0 to U, such that what? Well, that means, so there exists some value C in the open interval from 0 to U, such that what? Well, um, I can say that um, F prime of C is equal to F of U minus F of 0, all divided by U minus zero. So there are a couple of things here. First of all, I know that um, f of t is just equal to the tangent of t, so I can actually calculate what these values are. Um, first of all, what is f prime of c? Well, I know that f prime of t um, is just the derivative of tan, so let's calculate that. f prime of t is the derivative of the tangent function, so d by dt of the tangent of t. And that's just sec squared of t. So sec squared of t. And sec squared is exactly the same as 1 divided by the cosine squared of t. So that's just 1 over cos squared of t. That's just the definition of sec or secant. OK, well, what about f of u and f of 0? Well, f of 0 is just the tangent function evaluated at 0, which is 0. And f of u is just a tangent function evaluated at u, which is tan u. So in other words, this expression here, so let's just underline this. So this entire expression, um, that's equivalent to saying that 1 divided by cos squared of c, because we're evaluating at c, that's equal to f of u, or the tangent of u, minus the tangent of 0, which is 0, so I'm not going to write minus 0 all divided by u minus 0, which is u. OK, well, what else can we say? Well, I know that the, um, let's see, I know that cos squared, so cos squared of, let's say, y, that number is always less than or equal to 1 for any value of y. So that's true for, um, for all real y. And if I take the uh, reciprocal of both sides, and that tells me that um, 1 divided by cosine squared of y is always greater than or equal to 1. Taking the reciprocal of both sides means I've got to switch the direction of the inequality. But if 1 over cosine squared um, of y is greater than or equal to 1 for all values of y, um, well, uh, not, not quite all values of y because the denominator could be 0, so we're going to have to exclude that, um, that point. But for Basically, for any points which aren't singularities of the cosine function, we can say that this inequality holds. So if this is greater than or equal to 1, but this is exactly equal to tan u over u, so this is equivalent to saying that tan u over u is greater than or equal to 1. Okay, And now if I just multiply both sides of the inequality by u, and I can do that because u is a number between 0 and pi over 2, so u is some number um, that's between 0 and and pi over 2. If I do that, then I get tan u. Tan u is greater than or equal to u. And this is exactly what I wanted to prove. So I needed to show that tan u was greater than or equal to u. And if I go back up, um, what is that equivalent to? So I've shown that tangent of t. So I've now proved this result. I prove that the tan t is greater than or equal to t for all values of t in this open interval from 0 to pi over 2. And if we follow along all these equivalences uh, I've written above, I have now shown that g prime of t is less than or equal to 0, which is equivalent to saying that g of t is a decreasing function on this interval. So let's just write that out. So I've now proved, let's just scroll back down. It keeps glitching on me, so let's just do this. So I have now proved what? So therefore, g of t defined to be the sine of t over t is decreasing um, on the interval from 0 to pi over 2. OK, well, what does that mean? If g is decreasing on the interval from 0 to pi over 2, that means that 
g of t is going to achieve its minimum value when t approaches pi over 2. So in other words, um, for all values of t belonging to the interval from 0 to pi over 2, um, I can say that um, g of t, which is equal to the sine of t over t, is greater than or equal to g of pi over 2. So what is g of pi over 2? g of pi over 2, so g of pi over 2, well that's just the sine of pi over 2 divided by pi over 2, and that's what? Well sine of pi over 2 is sine of 90 degrees, which is just 1, and we're dividing that by pi over 2, and 1 over pi over 2 is just the reciprocal of pi over 2, which is 2 over pi, because we swap the positions of the numerator and the denominator. So this tells us, so let's just scroll down. So therefore, this tells us that sine of t divided by t is greater than or equal to 2 over pi. So if you multiply both sides of this inequality by t, we get that sine t is greater than or equal to 2t over pi. And that's true for all values of t belonging to the open interval from 0 to pi over 2. Now notice that at the start, I actually said that this uh, this lemma, or theorem if you like to call it, holds for all values of t belonging to the closed interval from 0 to pi over 2. But what I've ended up with here is the open interval. But that's not a problem, you see, because if I just plug in t equals 0, then I get sine of 0, which is 0, is greater than or equal to 2 times 0 over pi, and I get 0 is greater than or equal to 0, and that's not a contradiction at all, because t equals 0 means that this inequality is satisfied. So I can definitely take t to be 0. Now, if t were pi over 2, I'd get sine pi over 2, which is 1, which is greater than or equal to 2 times pi over 2 divided by pi, which is uh, 2 over pi times pi over 2. The 2s and the pi's cancel, and I'm just left with 1, so I get 1 is greater than or equal to 1. So it also holds for t equals 0 and t equals pi over 2 as well. So it's therefore true not just for the open interval, but for all t belonging to the closed interval from 0 to pi over 2. So that proves this inequality here. Okay, so that's all I want to show you today. Um, I'm next going to use this inequality at some point down the line to show you some of these more exotic integrals above. So I'm going to use it to prove uh, the values of the Fresnel integrals, sine x squared and cos x squared integrated over the half real line, and the same for the, the famous sine x over x integral. So if you like this video, please leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to this channel for more content just like this. Thanks.